Ladies and gentlemen, today is June 21st, 2016, and this is the Kane Kale Show, episode 298, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Kane Lafferty, and I'd like to welcome you to another show. Today, we are going to be moving into, back into our diva piece, and we're cleaning it up. In fact, today is a very special episode because I'm going to teach you guys how to paint a diva in just 30 seconds, okay? Step one. Step one. Uh, lay out some, uh, lay out a good face, right? Get, get a face that you like, right? Place it in the proper area. Step two, draw off of that head and then you have a nice sketch. Step three, refine the sketch. Step four, add your masks on. And then step five, oh, just render the entire thing. And that's how you paint, that, that's how you paint Diva. All right, thank you guys so much. All right, goodbye. Thanks for tuning in to another show. It was awesome. All right, <laughs> no, seriously, we're gonna be talking about today, okay. Obviously, you can see there was a major jump between these two, right? This is where we left off last week. And if you want to go see that, and click on this picture right here. But uh, there was a major jump from here to here. And while this might look a little bit intimidating, I assure you that I'm going to show you guys not only with the time lapse what I did, but then I'll actually go in here and I'll break down exactly what all these little effects are, uh, these little OP layers, um, as well as uh, line coloring, which is actually going to be the most important thing. Uh, that we're going to go into today. And that has to do with, let me show you, let me show you what that is. So just as a quick, uh, a little bit of a teaser for you, here's how the line coloring works. Okay, we're talking about lines, right? But see how when we take off this layer, this is the layer I'm talking about right down here. Uh, direct your attention down there and let me zoom it out so you can actually see what I'm pointing at. Okay, so you click this little eyeball on and off. See what that does to our picture? It allows it to kind of soften. It kind of creates, uh, it takes it away from the comic book feel and it starts to kind of push it a little bit more towards the realistic feel. And we're doing that all with line coloring. And then we're doing a little bit of overpainting afterwards. And I'm gonna get into that in just a moment. But uh, yeah, that's just a little teaser for what we're talking about today. But before we get into all of that good stuff, we need to take a stroll down the lovely lane because you guys have been being awesome. And I totally don't have it pulled up because I suck. So let me just go ahead and pull that up stealthily. There we go. There we go. Okay, cool. So uh, for those of you who don't know how the lovely lane works now, uh, you have to go to Facebook and then it will totally lag your computer out because the site is awesome and uh, the way that they coded it makes it so it totally blows up your computer. But anyway, if you want to see all these awesome pieces for yourself, just go there, tinyurl slash kankalefanart. Submit your pieces, like the page, get featured on the show. And of course, come get some cookies. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with all that out of the way, let's close that window down before it crashes my computer. And let's get into the time lapse, shall we? Let's get into the time lapse. All right, cool. And I'm working with VLC now because VLC is an awesome program. It is an awesome program. And it allows me to change the speed on the fly so we can go ahead and speed this up. And I'm gonna tell you guys a little story. A little story. And uh, this has to do with, oh, actually, let me, let me preface this with actually, uh, okay, so you look at this, right? You look at this final version, or it's not actually final. There's still a lot of stuff that I wanna do with this. Mostly just little tiny um, textures. We'll probably go into this next week about like really getting in there and defining materials, adding little textures and stuff like that. Uh, but overall, the piece is probably about 90% done. This is the point where you can take a breath of fresh air, you can wipe the sweat off your forehead, literally speaking, because it is so hot in this room, and, and you can be happy because you're on the downhill, you're relaxed. But there is a dark side of this art. There's a dark side that I don't like to show you guys. And it actually is very dark, okay? So take a look at this. Look at the darkness on this piece and look at the contrast. Now this is me experimenting with something. This was me trying to do a, a completely different uh, lighting uh, scene, lighting scenario with this piece. And uh, you can see I, I did everything right. I, I went down here and made a tiny little thumbnail. Everything seemed like it was going to be okay. But then as I went through, I rendered, I, I flattened things down before they were supposed to be flattened. I was painting all in one layer. It just didn't work. And I got so ticked off at the end of the day. And, and, and I was also working at the end of the day when all my mental energy was completely exhausted and I was just chugging away, chugging away. I'm sure you guys have been to this point before with your own pieces where you just feel like things aren't working, but you're like, no, like I just gotta buckle down and I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna make it work if I just believe, right? You gotta believe in myself and I will make, I will make this piece right, right? But believe it or not, sometimes all pieces were not meant to see the light of day. Some things were not meant to see the light of day. So anyway, we tried, or we started over again. We went, I actually went from here, 
And I said, you know what? I don't like this piece at all. I want to start all over again. And I went back to this point. I went all the way back to this point, started over again, and then we got eventually to here. Let me zoom out so you can see. See, so the difference is um, mostly because I was really just trying to do a different light source. But I didn't realize that, you know what? The studio lighting, like the front frontal lighting with a little bit of rim light, it just looks nice. It just looks good. So, And for the type of picture that we were doing here for Diva, I just figured it worked perfectly. It worked perfectly. Don't try to change it if it's working as intended, right? So, um, but the time lapse is going to be here because you guys are going to see my process. And I'm going to speed it up really quickly. That way um, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going through and you can see me coloring the lines now. So it seems like everything, I'm following all my own rules, but it still doesn't end up looking right. And the reason why I truly believe this happened was because I was, first of all, I was trying something new. I'm not saying that this uh, lighting setup is totally impossible to do, but um, I really feel like I, I was just losing the character. I was losing the character that was in the original sketch. And you guys have heard me talk about this all the time. Like I was comparing this right here I was comparing this back to the original sketch, and I was saying this is not the same character. This doesn't have the same look to it. Um, oh, and by the way, uh, if you look up here at the file name, Tigernier asked, "What? Why is the? What's the significance of it being named Core B? Is that like an abbreviation of Korean Babe?" And it just might be. Actually, it started out. I think I said this in episode one. The diva piece actually started out as a study of just like a Korean face. I wanted to draw like a Korean girl, and then eventually it translated into, "Hey, let's just take this." study that we're doing and turn it into diva and so that's why it's named uh, it's not korean babe it's core like korean and then b as like the second file like abc I, I tend to use letters as opposed to numbers so that is the answer to your question tiger near so yeah here i am you can see me struggling here i'm really trying to just like make the face work trying to get the lighting right and i'm just like slowly changing it like away from like i'm a huge fan of doing the line coloring technique Mostly because of this point, because at the point where you begin rendering, you shouldn't have to do that much overpainting. You shouldn't have to do that much. Um, because at the point where you're like repainting the entire face, I really feel that you have kind of gone out of bounds. Like you've gone out of the boundaries of your original line art and you're starting to change the things that you might have liked about your original sketch and the original character. So, um, and, and not to mention the, the way I rendered the subsurface scattering mixture face look like. She literally does not have a skeleton inside of that face. It looks like she's made out of jello. Just didn't work out too well. Didn't work out too well for us. But that's okay because you guys deserve to see everything. You guys deserve to see everything. And if anything, this is a good example of that um, everybody, everybody gets it wrong every now and then. Everybody gets to a point where they're just like, you know, what? I just don't like it. So now we're starting over again. We're starting over again, guys. And so this is the point where I told you that I went back. Is this, still, this thing still going like light speed? Oh, it is. Okay, so let's slow it down just a tad bit. So I'm going back. I went back to the original piece. I scrapped that entire, I scrapped this entire Korean babe PSD to go back to this one. Okay, or, or sorry, to this one. And I started over again. And I asked myself, okay, what am I actually trying, what am I trying to accomplish with this piece? And I said, you know what, let's just do the frontal lighting and then let's have the side light be, uh, let's have a side light, but have it be more of a rim light, more of like a design type of thing. And that's where we ended up getting to this point. See how now it's like this really overexposed rim light feeling, really dug that. And uh, while it still doesn't like allow us to light the face from a different angle, we're going to have to study that. That's another joint study session uh, that we'll have to get into lighting faces from different angles. Because I, I feel like I've gotten way too comfortable with rendering just from the front like this. It looks nice. Yes, it looks nice. But we want to be versatile artists. We want to be very versatile. Um, so yes, that is something that we'll be going into in the future, along with other things. But we'll be getting to that in just a moment. Okay, so um, this is the next day when I woke up and I'm like, okay, I got a fresh, fresh day. Got a good night's sleep. Let's try this all over again. Let's try setting this up slowly. Okay. Now, um, you might notice that I'm working with, all of my masks tend to start off as different colors, or not different colors, darker colors. And the reason why I do this, I outlined in last week's episode. And if you're curious about going back, checking out last week's episode, then just go ahead and click on this picture. It'll take you back, it'll tell you how I set up the masks, why I set them up as dark colors, and why I like to set up, and, uh, and why I like to paint in lights, as opposed to painting in shadows. Um, I really feel like it's just, a much better way to do things. Much better way to do things, and you just learn a lot more. So now that we're painting, lighting from the front, 
so much easier and everything just seems like it's going well. So this is step one. So this is step one. And at this point, let's go ahead and pause. Actually, let's go ahead and pause as soon as we start getting into the line coloring because that's what we're focusing on today. Focusing on line coloring today. Okay, uh, have we started it yet? Uh, looks like we're doing a little bit on the face, but I wanna get to the point specifically where we do it in the suit. The suit is where you'll see probably the biggest changes. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and speed it up even more. Speed it up even more. I worked so much on this face. Like I just wanted it to look nice. I wanted it to look cute. I wanted it to look like she's actually Korean, like the nationality that she is supposed to be in the game. Um, but I, I don't feel, I, I don't know. She doesn't look very Korean to me in the actual Overwatch game. Hey, there we go. Hey, now that we have flapped our gums enough, now we can actually get into this. Oh man, I'm sweating so much. I got the AC like cranked up like full blast and I'm still sweating. Whoa, whoo. Okay, so anyway, let's talk about line coloring, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about line coloring because that's all this really is. That's all this really is. It's just smoke and mirrors, smoke and mirrors and line coloring. So let's talk about that. Let's get rid of our mech. Let's get rid of the mech. Let's take away everything. Let's take away everything except for Diva. And let's talk about what's going on in here, okay? Let's go ahead and open up the Diva layers. And for those of you who are curious about looking through these layers for yourself, don't worry, the PSD will be available at the end. All right, but let's go ahead and take off all these OP layers, right? Changes the face a little bit because we do a little bit overpainting on the face. But let's talk about the layers, okay? So line coloring, what the heck is line coloring? Well, I've shown you guys a couple times before, but this one, I'd like to go over it again, really kind of drive home exactly what's going on here. Okay, so as you know, uh, we have set up our drawing in this way. We've set it up in a way where we have our lines, right? Our lines exist right here. See, I can pull the lines off and then she becomes a scary ghost looking lady, right? But once we put the lines on, right, she's back to her cute self. But it comprises of our lines and then the colors. The colors are all of these layers in here, starting with the character mask. And then all these other layers are clipped back to it. This allows us to just very simply go in and color things without fear of going out of the lines. Because see, once I start unclipping things, they start going out of the lines. They start looking kinda, kinda freaky, right? We can unclip all these things, see how they all go outside of the lines. But uh, clipping them allows it to stay right with this original character mask. And you can see, if I pull it away, see it's just a silhouette. It's just a silhouette of the character, right? As well as, oh well, I made this part actually part of her suit, so you can see the suit drawings in there. But see how simple this is? This is a lot of like colors being laid on, but it's not really, really, um, it's not sharp. Like you don't have to worry about making the colors sharp. And that's what's nice about setting it up in this fashion is that it allows you to play around with your colors. It allows you to find the look that you're going for, get the colors that you're looking for. But then the problem arises, and I'm sure you've run into this, and that is that, okay, well this looks good. I like the colors that are on here, but now my drawing looks like it's out of a comic, which isn't, I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. We love comics, but in this case, we want to render our character. We want it to look more realistic. So then we employ something called line coloring, and that's where we lay these colors on top of the lines. Now see, that's what this layer is right here, layer three. This is clipped back. This is clipped back to the, to the lines. And see, once I remove it, she turns into a Cthulhu. But look, this is exactly what is happening. There's just a bunch of colors that are laid on and clipped back clipped back to the mask, see? And now that allows it to basically color the lines. It softens them up. Specifically, I want you guys to look at, like right here, in the lips and the nose. See how they're black? They're represented by black color. But then we uh, add like reds into it, and it makes the face look so much more lively. It makes it look softer. Same thing in the suit down here. Take a look. If we take this away, all these black lines. But specifically on the insides, like pay attention to like these lines that are on the inside of her suit on the arm. See how once we paint those blue, see how we painted those like this blue? Softens them up. In fact, okay, well, I'm showing you guys the layer, but I should actually demonstrate this like real time. Okay, so here's a great example. So let's say um, you create a new layer and you set it above your lines. Now what I want you to do is think about your line coloring as uh, just paint it a darker color of whatever is around it. So in this case, we're painting it dark blue. See how once you start to lay it in there, it, look, it, it still retains that form, or it still kind of communicates that information, but it softens it, softens everything up. 
and it starts to make your drawing look very, very nice. Very, very nice. And we like that. We like that. So play around with a bunch of different colors. See how it affects different things. Specifically with the face, you'll see it really uh, shine through right here. Take reds. See, as soon as I put that red in, it starts to look more natural. Takes away those muddy colors. Takes them far away to a place where you'll never see them again. See, we turn it on and off. So that is line coloring, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the first step. That is the first step to beginning your rendering process. Okay, so now that we have done that, let's continue with the time lapse and then we'll get into blending the lines. Blending the lines, which is the next cool part. And that is gonna really allow you to take your pictures from comic booky to colored lines to the final, oh, I need to pull up the next one. Uh, G -I -H -I, there we go, okay, there we go. So that's gonna allow you to take your drawing from comic book to colored line comic book, and then the next thing that I'm going to teach you to do is called blending the lines, blending them, so that way you make them disappear. You want your lines to completely disappear to have a rendered look. And uh, the process for doing this is surprisingly easy, and I'm really excited to show you guys as well as liquify. Hey, isn't that cool? A lot of people probably tell you not to use liquify. That is a cheater's way to do it. All true artists should never have to use liquify. I say to heck with that, that you should use all the tools in your arsenal to make your drawing look freaking awesome. Not to mention, I uh, like things in my like sketches always look fine, but once you start to render the face out in like a 3D space, sometimes you'll notice the eye. I've noticed my eyes more than anything start to look like they're getting sucked to the side of the head. So the liquify tool comes in really handy there. You can kind of move it back into place make it look good, play around with a bunch of different facial features, kind of move them around, see if you can create a cute looking face, right? It's good stuff, good stuff. Highly recommend it, use all those tools, forget about the stigmas, throw them out the window, they're out the window. And yeah, yeah, just have some fun rendering, which is what we're doing here. Speed it up a little bit. All right, so we're rendering out the face. Um, I mean, I guess I can talk to you guys about a couple things here. Uh, things that I like to do with faces, and something that you'll notice that I do here is you'll see the face flicker back and forth. And what I'm doing is, uh, if you look right here, you can see that I'm working on a layer above everything. I'm now moving into the OP layers or the overpaint layers. And I'm turning them on and off constantly to compare. I'm comparing uh, basically like, oh, do I like this rendered nose or do I like it before? Do I like the eyes with the shine on them or do I like them without? And I'll just kind of go back and forth, back and forth and ask myself, is this improving the face? Is it clearing it up? Is it changing it too much? Um, because we want to make sure that we get that same cute face all the way to the end, all the way to the end. And I was pretty happy with the way that this one turned out. So, okay. So now, uh, we are getting into the line blending, which is a perfect time for me to segue back on over to the Photoshop document. And let's talk about blending lines. Let's talk about blending lines. Uh, do I have OPs here? Okay. So let's turn on the OPs. Do I have anything where I'm actually, oh, perfect, yeah. Okay, so let's turn this on. Ah, okay, so this is perfect, this is perfect. So I will demonstrate this real time. I'll demonstrate this real time for you and then I will turn the layers on and off so you can see exactly what's happening. Okay, so let's say, okay, we just got done line coloring. Our piece looks really nice, it looks softened up, but I can still see lines in here. I can still see lines, like specifically on the edges of these uh, nice boobs, right? These nice skin tight boobs. <laughs> Let's focus on this, because I know this is why you showed up. Let's go ahead and get into that. I can't believe I just said that on the show. <laughs> I'm so terrible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, kids that watch this show. Okay, but anyway, we're gonna get to this. <laughs> okay, um, so let's move this up here. So, blending the lines, blending the lines. So here's what I want you guys to think about. Here's what I want you to think about. So you have this line existing here, right? But now I want you to think about this line exists because it is a dark value, right? A line is merely your brain seeing a difference in two contrasts. For example, the darkness of this shape versus the lightness of that shape, right? And when you see the contrast there, your mind places a line between, okay? So what we wanna do is to make the line disappear, we wanna begin blending. And the way that I like to blend my lines is I like to think about gradating them. You're gonna gradate them, in this case, to the left. You're gonna to go to the left, right? Same thing here, go to the left. I mean, you're not always going to the left, but like, think about it as, um, well, actually, I don't know exactly the best way to describe it. But in this case, it's gonna be going to the left. And then I'll just, I'll show you, 
and then we, we will do a couple other examples, okay? So go ahead and just eye drop this, eye drop this color, and then I want you to go in there with your brush and then watch what I do. See how I just soften this edge? See how I just soften that? Same thing here. I'll just take this, soften that edge. Soften that edge up. So that way you wanna think about it as the line exists right here. The line exists because of contrast and that's what we're getting at here. We're getting at because it exists because of contrast, not because of a thick line, right? Same thing here. Here's a really good example right here on this arm. Let's take this and let's blend that line. See how simple that is? It's actually very, very simple. So your lines are now becoming gradients. I think that's the best way to describe it. Gradating your lines is a good way to make them disappear. Okay? And then ask yourself, this line exists because, now here's, here's a problem that you may run into. Sometimes you might have a line, but let's say that there was like a shadow down here that was really dark, right? Now, let's, now watch what happens. If you gradate this line too much, now this whole entire thing just turns into a blob. This whole, it just turns into a weird shape, which is okay, but I personally like the idea of having differences in your contrast, right? Even if it's very subtle. So the best way to do this is to say, okay, which side is going to be my dark side and which side is going to be my light side, okay? So you have, and what I mean by that is you have this line going through here. And to keep that line while blending it, we need to have one side represent our dark side, right? So let's say that this is the dark side. And then this side is going to be the lighter side. And we're talking about values, ladies and gentlemen, values, okay? So with that in mind, let's take the dark and light side and let's go ahead and put that into practice, okay? So let's blend this line. So this now becomes our dark side. Dang it, what the heck? There we go. Okay, dark side. There we go, known thing. Now done, okay? So we have that. And notice how the line is still there. It's just very, very thin. I really think that you don't have to, you don't have to make your lines disappear, but rather, that's why I like the idea of thinking about it as gradating your lines. That's just the perfect, that has to be the most perfect way that I've described it ever, is just gradate your lines, okay? So there's your dark side. And then take this lighter value right there, just kind of push that up to the edge. Push that up to the edge. And so then, see, now you have the separation of the arm and the other arm, right? And uh, that line still exists, but it's by contrast, by contrast. In fact, it might want to be just like a little bit darker. I don't know, maybe the blob was good. <laughs> just slightly, because there would be a little bit of ambient occlusion there, which is a fancy way of saying, hey, things cast shadows on each other when they're close to each other, okay? So there you go. So that's my example for blending your lines, ladies and gentlemen, blending your lines. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that translated over. Um, so let's go ahead and get rid of that and let's turn this on. So see how I've done that? See how I have blended the lines? I just turned them into values and gradated them, uh, specifically right here. In fact, you can see I actually even pushed this lightness down here. Look, this is a prime example of the dark side right here, the top part of this arm, and then the light side, the chest behind. Right? So you can see how I push this value, this lighter value down. Push it down so that that way there was more contrast there. All right, cool. So once you get that done, you're gonna be doing the same thing throughout the entire piece, right? You're going to be, uh, let's see, uh, I did it here. Oh look, here's a good example on the shoulder. See how we have that line there? Watch how I make it disappear. See how I just paint it all one color? Paint it all one color. And there you go, change the face up a little bit. Added a uh, multiply layer. Multiply layers are also very handy for changing up your, uh, just your values, right? If you don't wanna have to repaint everything. In fact, I think this one is just a, uh, what color is this actually? I think it's just like a light blue. Yeah, it's a very light blue and then you set it to multiply. That can help you to rearrange your values, get them all looking good, okay? A little bit of overpaint in there, overpaint there, and that's good. Wait, did I turn that off? Oh, I must have turned that off. Okay, never mind. We didn't even use that overpaint. We didn't, or we didn't even use that multiply. Maybe I was supposed to, and I accidentally turned it off and then did, did the overpainting. Oh, well, whatever. All righty, guys. So that is my lesson for today about how to blend your lines. And then let's go ahead and get to this point right here. And let's actually, uh, let's dissect this and make sure that everything is still going according to plan. 
Okay, let's dissect everything by doing uh, this. Let me get rid of these OPs here. And let's compare the two. Let's compare the two, but let's make sure that, wait, why the heck is this not centered? There we go, okay. So let's compare the two. So I want you guys, now knowing that amazing knowledge, look at what I've done here. Okay, so we have the line, how did I get rid of it? Look at that, I painted it all as one color. Dark side, light side, okay? Let's take a look up at the face, okay? See this line going through here? It's actually almost completely gone because we have colored the lines already. See, look, dark side, light side, dark value, light value, okay? So that's what I want you guys to ask yourself. Uh, wherever you have placed lines, it's oftentimes because there is a difference in value there. There's always gonna be a difference in value there. And uh, so I'd ask you guys to Pay close attention to that, and that's how you make your lines disappear, okay? Same thing here, look at this. I created a dark side, dark shape, the shadow underneath the arm here, and then the lighter shape, which is created by the reflected light, because let's, let's not forget about the light that's coming from beneath, right? Because I know you guys, you love your direct lights, you love your direct lights, but let's not, oh, let's not forget about reflected light. That's this stuff that's happening here and here and here and here. And that's the biggest difference between something that looks cartoony, comic-y, to where it starts to look much more realistic because reflected light is all around you. It's all around you. If you look at any photo of anybody, especially out in the bright sun, you'll notice that there is always gonna be that bright light source coming from the sky, but then you, oftentimes people always forget about all the light that's reflecting from the ground beneath, coming back up, coming back up. So you can use that as a tool to say, okay, well there's a cast shadow here, and then the reflected light will come up here and uh, allow us to separate that. Because see, prior to this, it was two similar values, two similar values separated by a dark line. And then we got rid of that by saying, okay, well, let's have this blend, let's gradate this to this side, right? Thereby making this line disappear. And then sharpen this edge up, and there you go. See, that's literally all I did. I just went from there and just changed it so that way the value or the line is now a shadow and then the difference in the values creates the line. Alrighty, peoples. All righty, peoples. All right, before we go, we do need to do something very special, and that is, of course, we need to release the question catapults. All right, the question coming in is gonna be from... Oh, shoot. Who, who submitted this one? The... <laughs> The MZ layout changed, so I can't see your, your lovely names anymore. But anyway, this question is about rendering and different materials interacting with light. And the question is, hello, Keen, thank you for all of the amazing content. You guys are so nice. Thank you so much. Uh, but they're asking about something that I suck at, and that is, of course, rendering materials and different light sources and different colored lights and all that stuff. And while I don't have an answer for this right now, I do want to sort of answer the question by saying that I am planning on doing... I am planning on doing more joint study sessions where we will discuss and study different types of materials and different light sources and all that good stuff. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much for the question. And uh, yeah, look forward to that. Okay, the last thing before we do go, guys, is one last thing that I want to talk about is uh, I'm sure you're wondering how I did all these effects on here. Let me show you guys how I did that really quickly. It's actually deceptively simple. So let's go ahead and open up the effects um, folder and let's look at this. So it's actually just a few layers. So the first layer was actually this right here. Now this represents just like the white light, like the white brightest parts of our, uh, of the sunlight that's hitting the side of her. And I like to think of it as it's blowing out to the point where it literally just becomes a shape. Like you can do this entire shape with just one color. Then I do a little bit of a backfill. Now this allows to, look, it's like kind of like this orange color. This kind of creates like a cool like bloom effect of like sunlight hitting somebody because it goes to like this really bright white but then as it falls off it just kind of will have like this orange kind of glow to it. Then uh, also, speaking of bloom, you'll also go in there with another layer and start, start creating um, light spills or how the light will spill off of it. And this helps to kind of show atmosphere. This uh, just makes everything look really, really nice. Okay, so. <laughs> 
So yeah, specifically in your brightest points. So like say right here on the shoulder. Think about where all the light is actually going to be gathering and really glowing its brightest. That's where you wanna put those types of things. Then uh, a little bit of green glow, um, some more green bloom. A uh, really good way to make bloom is I like to create, see look, the color that I'm actually using here is this light green. But see, once I set it here, and you wanna to go to your layer properties right down here, and if you set it to hard light, I found that that makes a really nice looking bloom effect, okay? But be careful because it's very addicting. Do not do too much. Simplicity, simplicity, okay? And then of course we got one more hard light layer on here to really like kick up that bloom. I wanted this, uh, the light hitting the side of Diva to look really like super overexposed. And that's how you do that. That is how you do that. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, with all that out of the way, we're gonna end today's show. Thank you guys so much for joining me on YouTube as usual. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. You guys take care of yourselves. Oh wait, oh shoot, I totally forgot about the freaking Patreon. And okay, let's first start with the sponsors. Thank you to my amazing sponsors. Laura Bashir, David Gariello, Megan Gwynn, Ian Crowell, and Matthias Silva. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring the show. You guys are amazing. Keep the lights running at night. Thanks so much. And of course, if you would like to sponsor the show, and or, uh, and or, oh, well, all the sponsorships are full, dang it. I need to open up more sponsorship roles. But anyway, um, if you would like to get today's PSD, just click right here. <laughs> And you can dissect all these layers for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Look, look at it for yourself. Like get in there and like actually like get rid of all these OP layers. You know, click on the freaking uh, the color line layer. Like look at everything that I did. I highly urge you guys to get in there. Color pick, dissect layers. Really look at my entire process. And that's all available on Patreon. Just click here. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to end today's show. So thank you again. Thumbs up if you don't. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, you guys take care. See ya.